the empty warehouse next door. And in the last year, we have built the TV studios and put the equipment in and are now doing a nightly news show every night at 7 o'clock that we're now beta testing and getting ready for television. Right now, going out to members at PrisonPlanet.tv and then reaching millions as it spills out onto YouTube and other systems. Help us go to the next level. Not reaching 15 million a week, but reaching 30, 40, 50 million a week. Our growth curve is exponential, but we need to hit our afterburners and turbocharge. History is happening now. The war for human liberty against total dehumanization is on now. Join us Thursday, November 3rd at InfoWars.com. We're going to have a 24-hour-plus live transmission with guests and interviews starting at 11 a.m. and running into my next radio show the next day. We're going to have a huge lineup of liberty-loving patriots from all over the world joining us. It's going to be amazing. And this money bomb is going to have a lot of new things added to it that's going to make it even more powerful than past years. So please donate at InfoWarsMoneyBomb.com or InfoWars.com forward slash Money Bomb or simply spread the word about the Money Bomb. Stand with InfoWars.com and my incredible crew and all of our other supporters and help us get the word out even more. The ball is in your court. The rest is up to you. It's InfoWars Money Bomb 2011, November 3rd. It kicks off 11 a.m. Visit the website at InfoWarsMoneyBomb.com. InfoWars.com forward slash Money Bomb. Tyranny is here. The grim future foretold in 1984 has become reality. It really says that the state is God. The United States is now recognized globally as one of the most oppressive police states on Earth. This film conclusively proves the existence of a secret network of FEMA camps now being expanded nationwide. This documentary exposes how the continuity of government program has established an all-powerful shadow state. Police State 4 chronicles the sickening depths to which our republic has fallen. Prepare to enter the secretive world of emergency dictatorship. Body scanners, sound cameras, citizen spies, stage terror and cameras on every street corner. It's only the beginning of the New World Order's hellish plan. The police state isn't coming. It's here. Secure your copy today at InfoWars.com or see it online in the highest quality at PrisonPlanet.tv. Hi, hey, welcome folks. Hey, welcome back to the InfoWars Money Bomb. This is Mike Adams, the Health Ranger. Now we're going to be filling in for the next two hours. And thank you for your patience. Uh, I was scheduled to jump in about a half an hour ago, but of course David Icke called in and it wasn't that a fascinating interview. You know, I, I've, I've read all of David Icke's books and I find him just to be a fascinating person, just a, a tremendous researcher. And I uh, hope you enjoyed that interview segment. Some really, I mean, every time I think I've got things uh, sort of uh, at least a little bit figured out out there in the industry, what's going on with GMOs, what's going on with vaccines, uh, I just open up David Icke's book and then, whoa, there's a whole nother layer behind that. So that was a great interview. And uh, thank you for, for waiting and thank you for your patience. Now, what we have coming up for you in the next few minutes, actually over the next hour or two, we've got an interview with Pam Larry. Uh, coming right up in just a couple of minutes. And she is the woman who began the GMO labeling initiative in California. Uh, she's the one who started the whole thing. Uh, really cool. Uh, what a great idea. It's really important because California can set the precedent that could then just spread across the country and get GMOs labeled on foods. And of course, that would very quickly cause people to start avoiding GMOs. And that's what we want. I mean, we want choice, right? We want honesty in the labels so that we can make a choice and uh, avoid GMOs if that's what we wish to do. And I think most people wish to avoid genetically modified food, so that would be a big deal. So we're going to have her on in just probably 60 seconds or so. Uh, we've also got uh, another guest following her, Rachel Pachivas from California. Uh, she's also part of the GMO initiative, but uh, uh, in addition, she has some information about the Occupy Oakland situation. As you know, there was uh, there was some violence erupted yesterday that was covered on Drudge Report, in fact. 
And after that, we're going to be talking briefly, if we can get him on, uh, Michael Badar, who was there on the scene. And then finally, later on, uh, about an hour from now or so, Robert Scott Bell will be joining us to give us an update on the Raw Milk Freedom Riders event that just took place a few days ago, a couple of days ago, where a caravan of moms drank raw milk in front of the FDA. In fact, they, they dipped the cookies in it and they had raw milk and cookies in front of the FDA. And the FDA responded to that, to that with a letter, and we'll be going over the FDA's response and what it means. It's really quite fascinating, and uh, good job, big shout out to all those wonderful moms who took part in that uh, peaceful protest. Yeah, they didn't have to fire bullets or anything, they just drank raw milk and ate some cookies. Uh, what a wonderful message for uh, peace, in, but also liberty and courage at the same time. Now, as I promised, coming up, uh, uh, Pam Larry right here. In fact, she should be on the phone joining us to talk about this. We've got Pam for a uh, about 10 to 15 minutes. Pam, uh, are you on the phone? Can you hear me? I am, and I can hear you. How are you doing? Okay, great. I'm doing fantastic. Thank you for joining us here on the InfoWars Money Bomb Edition. And uh, give, give people a little bit of background about this. Why did you begin the GMO Labeling Initiative drive, the petition drive in California? Sure. Well, um, I had been studying about genetically engineered foods for about seven, eight years and was getting increasingly depressed about the whole thing and just like looking at the legislative efforts that never went anywhere and, you know, petition after online petition, yada, yada. And finally, I mean, I was just getting actually quite depressed about it and I just really kind of had an epiphany one morning uh, lying in bed in San Francisco that it was time for the people of California to vote on genetically engineered food so that we'd remember how powerful we are when we take back our food. So that's how it started, well, and that, uh, that, that was on January 20th. Oh, yeah. Okay, so January 20th, but since then, you've had all yeah. kinds of support, not just you support bet. in the press. T tell us about that, and, and the financial sure. support, too. Sure. So um, I, we, I took about six weeks to learn how to do an initiative, got a website up, made a Facebook page, and just kind of started reaching out. Started down in Southern California because that's where the most population is, went to small meetings, people came on board, said they'd leave their communities, and slowly it just started to snowball. Um, and then uh, late uh, in June, I got contacted by uh, Dr. Bronner's magical soap, David Bronner. I can talk about this now because they wanted to keep a lot of this under wraps for a long time. Um, and he said that they wanted to get involved and do a feasibility study, so that was done. The survey was done. All sorts of great stuff was done. And um, just more and more people. We've got other organizations. The Organic uh, Consumer Association has always been supportive. Jeffrey Smith is supportive. Um, Center for Food Safety. Uh, let me see. Gosh, there's this Food Democracy Now. We've got different businesses on board now. Nature's Path. Mercola, you guys, all sorts of, it's just amazing what's happening and exploding yeah, here it's, in California. Yeah, it's across the industry. I mean, you, what, yeah. the names you just named there, that's, that's across the industry. There's, it's really a coalition, you might say, of all these groups, the publishers, the, the cereal company you mentioned, Nature's Path, the Organic <laughs> Consumers Association. And this crosses all political lines. It's, it's left, exactly. right, it's libertarian, it's conservative, it's everything, it's independent. Exactly. But yeah. it, isn't it wonderful that it has come to this now? But it, you get all that all that support. What about the opposition? What are you now right. anticipating? Well, we're anticipating quite a bit of opposition, actually. I mean, pr that's pretty much a no brainer. Um, you know, they have started with some blogs already. You know, you know, totally mis misrepresenting the issues. You know that we've been had this for two thousand years. Blah blah blah. You know that whole story. Um, they've been, you know poo pooing it as we're Luddites, you know, all that kind of stuff, or that it's a crazy California thing. But, you know, and, and we anticipate that the mudslinging will get, you know, inc will increase and get worse, um, you know, because that's what you do when you're trying to hold on to something that, you know, is a, loser, you know, is a losing proposition. Well, at least you know? if they're going to be, uh, if they're going to have integrity, they should sling genetically modified mud and not just the regular earth mud. Um, <laughs> You know, I mean, come on, people. What, what right. They're saying we're Luddites because we don't want to have our food engineered by a bunch of right. evil scientists. That's, that well, seems strange. Yeah, and one of our things is that if they're so wonderful, why not label them? Because you should be advertising and want them labeled. Yeah, that's so. a good point. It should say, now featuring extra GMOs right mm -hmm. on the package. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So pretty cool, yeah. But just the ground soul of support has been amazing. I mean, we started with one person on March 10th. 
We now, on a grassroots level, have over 100 leaders throughout the state organizing their communities, going to events, showing movies, having tabling, you know, information to give out. We're gearing up for signature gathering, which should start soon. Uh, you know, having trainings about that. You can visit our website it's at labelgmos.org. Wait a minute. What is, what is the site again? I didn't get that. Labelgmos.org. Okay, so labelgmos.org. Yeah, and we have our different events. That's the official grassroots campaign site. And um, we have uh, our events up there, or on there, for people throughout the state to, um, to join us. We're inviting everybody. I mean, this is going to take, as I call it, not just a large village, but a, a large universe <laughs> yeah. to get to get voted in on groups, large and small, individuals, companies, organizations. Well, We've but all got to come together because this is big. Yeah, it, it is big, and we and we are coming together. And one we of the are. things that's really cool about that is here at Infowars. Uh, Alex Jones has been covering this issue, giving it a lot of coverage. He, he, he gets it. He recognizes the threat that this is to our food, to our fertility. I mean, he was just interviewing David Wolf. Uh, I'm sorry, David Icke. Excuse me. Uh, I, w I was talking to David earlier. He was just interviewing David Icke about genetics and uh, the future of the, of the human race. And so he's on board with it. Infowars is on board with it. And, and, and now you've got this petition coming in. It's, it's really incredible. Can you, uh, can you talk about the importance of now using this petition to bypass, uh, Congress in, in, mm -hmm. a, in a sense? We're bypassing the politicians with this. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So, you know, there are certain things that we have to be really sure that we cover because, you know, uh, labeling food is something that happens all around the country. You know, not just in the state of California. So people often have questions about that. It's called preemption. Um, you know, but we've got that covered. We, we believe that we have a right in California to have labeling that supersedes any uh, policy, not regulation, because labeling is not regulated. It's a policy. Um, we feel that we've got really great uh, legal arguments to counter any kind of challenge or, you know, or anything that might come up against it once it's voted in. Um, I, we've had an amazing team working on this, and it's, it's really pretty monumental. I mean, this will change the course of, of food history in this country. A absolutely. It, it will change the course of food history, and it's going to be really interesting to see what kind of arguments they come out with mm -hmm. to, uh, to, to fight this. Uh, all kinds of scare campaigns, but really, uh, if people had an accurate assessment of what to what is safe versus what is scary, you know, what's safe is non genetically modified food, and what is scary is this playing God with the genes and you know, uh, putting putting spider genes in plants and putting uh, animal genes in plants and pesticide genes in plants. What what could be more frightening than that? Especially if you understand anything about science, really. Mm -hmm. And, and the, the neat part is, is that we're really focusing on our right to know. And, you know, we, um, I, I, no matter what, where you come down, I mean, there are even though quite a few people who are pro-GMO who are also pro-labeling because, you know, one of our other things is, you know, farmers' right to grow, our right to know, because that's the way that the law reads right now is that people can plant this stuff. But oh, we're saying, okay, fine. You know, the law supports you in doing that. Well, we, we believe that, you know, informed consumer rights should supersede corporate, uh, you know, 